How's it going everybody? Chaos Gaming here and yes we are back with some more My Hero Ultra Impact and in today's video I made a guide on how to beat Kymax Battle Genten at the SS rank difficulty. Now this is from my personal experience of beating him so if you have a way that is different from mine please let me know down below I would love to read about it. Also if I do say something wrong in this video call me out on it and I will pin your comment. So with that being said let's not waste any more time let's go this shit right the hell up and ladies and gentlemen let us get started with today's video so the recommended skills that you do need for this fight i want to go over this again just in case people don't look at the skills before they go into it there's critical hit rate up critical resistance up evasion and critical resistance down now for phase one what you are going to do in this fight is just focus on genten that's it that's all you need to do before moving on into phase two now before you do move on to phase two i do recommend that you do save your active skills just to go straight into it like that don't try to save your pulse ultras just use those right away because you're not going to have those for Phase 2. Because what I've seen is that once I save my plus Ultras, I don't have them for Phase 2. Now, Phase 2, what you're going to do is in order to attack Genton again, you must lower Redesto's HP to 1 and either land 3 critical attacks. Or if he heals, lower it to 1 HP again. Then you'll be able to attack Genton to move on into the third phase. So as you guys can see here, just attack Redesto, get him low. And then with that nice red arrow pointing at Genton, get Genton low. Then you move on to the third phase, which I would say is the tricky phase and where it gets a lot of people. So in phase three, this is what I personally do in the fight. I don't know if there is a different way to go about this phase, but I just make sure to take down Genten as fast as possible while trying to keep my evasion up from Redestro's Plus Ultra. Another thing to note is that in this phase, Genten's frost effect is more active around this time. So what I recommend is not attacking with action skills the one turn that it is active. And if you guys don't know what frost does, the current value X for every one frost the character has, they receive 1% of all the damage they deal and spread one frost to character on both sides of them whenever the character receives a critical attack. If a character has frostbite, damage received from the frost doubles. If a character is frozen, they gain double the amount of frost. And in this fight, Genten is able to 1. Frostbite, 2. Freeze you as well. And I think when I go over the characters that you want to use for this fight, I'll go over like what certain amount of frost is it when he's able to frostbite and when he's able to freeze. And then I just want to tell you guys what Frostbite is as well, which deactivates skill chains and makes character take X percent of the damage they deal. Now, I never knew that about Frostbite until today. All I knew about Frostbite is that it makes it to where like, the skill chains, you can't activate them at all. That's all I knew about it. So the fact that you basically get to stack double the freaking damage with Frost and Frostbite is insane. It's literally the meme, why are you hitting yourself? That's how it goes with both of these activated. Now, once you do deal with this and you move on to the fourth phase, in the final phase, you have to make sure that you are targeting Redestro. First, he is the only one who can die before you try to finish off Genten once and for all. It should be smooth sailing if you still have the character that is giving your whole team evasion and also penetrate because, again, you want to make sure that you are critting. They getting crit is dying for free. And then we just put a nice little X on Redestro and then a nice little X on Genten. So with that, this is my simplified guide on how to beat this climax battle. I wonder if there's a way if I could share it besides my Discord. I don't know. Like, I mean, you guys could pause the video at any point just to see what each face is talking about. But if you think I should share it somewhere else, let me know. But now that we looked at all the things that you must do for this fight, or what I've done in this fight in order to beat it, let's move on to the characters that I've seen throughout the Discord and what I've used that are the best characters to beat in this fight. All right, real quick before we do get on to the characters, I want to show you what each frost effect is doing to you. So at 20 frost, it gives you frostbite. At 30 frost, it freezes everybody. And then at 50 frost, you get plus ultra gauge charge rate down. So you're not going to be able to charge your plus ultra gauge as fast as you were before you got hit with this effect. So make sure you do plan a strategy around each frost effect that you are reaching. Now let's take a look at the characters that are going to be good for this fight. Starting with what I think is one of the best fourth movie izuku midoriya this midoriya just comes in clutch for you so much just one the plus ultra two the first action skill and then three the second action skill like everything just works together to make it to where that you are not going to be struggling up against genten also the auto skills as well like the auto skills come in clutch like take a look at this right here after two turn pass while character regenerates hp increases critical resistance of all allies by 50 percent for three turns and restores three of the temporary status ailments so you're gonna be chilling got it chilling not worrying about the freaking freezing or frostbite majority of the time you will still get it no matter what but 
he's gonna make it to where that it dies down after you do get that HP regeneration. And then increases max HP of all allies by 20%, making it to where that you know you got more HP than you currently have. And then increases his max HP by 7% when using a character to successfully execute a skill chain up to five times. So be mindful of that. When you do use a skill chain five times, you're not gonna have that effect anymore. You're just gonna have the 20%. So keep a counter, I don't know. And then increases defense of all allies by 10% up to three times and increases their post ultra gauge by 20% when using a character to successfully execute a skill chain and it gives all allies ability to nullify status tailment for one turn every three turns so again one of the best characters you could just have for this fight if you have them use them please for the love of christ don't try to nerf yourself just beat the fight for free next another amazing character for this fight Mitiko. with Mitiko on her pulse ultra specifically it is increasing the freezing and frost spike resistances of all allies for three turns so let's say you got a team with the Mitiko and midoriya like, what is the struggle? If you're struggling, I'm assuming your characters are level 80. That's it, because ain't no way. Because she's helping the other half of what Midoriya kind of does, but she does it even more with the freezing and frostbite resistances. Like, come on, man. And then she also gives herself evasion. Her cooldown times are very small. She increases her plus ultra gauge. So if you combine that with the Midoriya, you're going to be getting her plus ultra, like, what, every two turns? Like, she's going to have, like, the fastest plus ultra ever. And then increases critical hit rate of all allies by 20% for three turns. And it doesn't matter what skill chain you use it, as long as you use it in a skill chain, bam, you're going to pop off. And then after character initiates critical attack two times, restores character's HP by 10% relative to the damage dealt to the opponent. And mind you, she's going to be doing a lot of damage, but it's only up to five times. So be mindful of that as well. But now, next character, Uraka Celebration. This character is so good because she does a lot of damage in this fight. She's AoE. She cancels two of the opponent's temporary buffs. And then she's able to increase her plus ultra gauge as well. Cooldowns are low for four turns. And then just... I wish you could stun, but sadly, you can't stun at all. But she does increase speed of our allies by 25%. Re not redesho, sorry. Geten does have the ability to lower your speed. So the fact that you are able to gain more speed with her, she definitely comes in clutch with that. And she's able to increase her own defense by 30%. It's just good to have tanking in this fight. All these climax battles, it's good to tank those hits. Now the next character, my personal go, Katsuki Bakugo Season 3 Edition. This character on his Pulse Ultra is able to increase critical hit rate by 30%. He blocks buffs. He also has critical resistance. I think it's in the second auto skill. I could be wrong. Yep. When character has the ability to overwhelm, increases character speed by 40%. So you're also going to be fast as well. And critical resistance by 40%. So you could keep him in the first phase or you could use him for the second phase. It's up to you. Really, he's just good at all phases. And he's going to be doing a lot of damage just for the fact that Gensen exists with buffs. Temporary buffs that don't last very long. Now, we're going to get into the characters now that are like... Now, I wouldn't say iffy. It's just just in case you might not have one or the other. So with Celebration Shoto Todoroki, I don't have this character. So if anything, let's see real fast what he's able to do. So he is able to shorten cooldown time of all allies by one. It gives them a barrier that nullifies one hit. He increases character's defense of all... Wait, sorry. He increases all allies' defense by 25% for three turns. Increases their max HP by 20% for three turns. And increases their critical resistance by 30% for three turns. And also gives them a barrier that nullifies one hit. But that cooldown time is crazy. So I would suggest you have a character that is also giving cooldown time by one. Just to make sure that does go down by five turns. If you have a character that does it by two... Even better, four turns, get it done even faster. I just want to see if he has an effect that like gets rid of freezing or frostbite effects. It doesn't look like that. The only thing that I'm seeing is that he regenerates HP of all allies for two turns and then cancels one of their temporary status ailments when used in a successfully executed skill chain. Okay, and then he, I did see also that he shortens cooldown time by one after one turn passes while using the barrier. So you're always going to see this effect no matter what, which I like. Next character is going to be the Nejiri Hado. With this Hado, she is also able to give allies the ability to evade one time. With her action skills, she gives critical resistance of all allies by 30%. She does regenerate HP by 8% for herself. And then with the second action skill, increases skill impact by 40% when character is affected by nullify status ailments, which she does give to herself. As you can see right here, it gives all allies the ability to nullify two status ailments up to one time. When characters regenerate HP, she increases her own skill impact and speed. Gives character the ability to nullify two status ailments every three turns. All the time. All the time you're going to see. It. And then after a character receives an HP restoration one time, increases defense of all allies by 20% for two turns and cancels one of their status ailments. 
Next character, which is the character that I use for my fight, as you guys can see in the video, I did beat it with this character, is the Uraraka. She's able to heal on her plus ultra, decreases the defense so you can do even more damage. And then on her first action skill, she reduces action skill cooldown time by one. And then also, with her second action skill, gives evasion, which again, I would say personally, is one of the most important things of this fight because neither Genten or Redestro could go through it. So you're gonna be safe no matter what. And then also increases max HP of our allies by 30% for three turns. So you're gonna have more HP than you currently had. And then if you combine that with the Midoriya, who's also giving it by 20%, 50% across the board, you're gonna be fine and chilling for free. She also does increase speed of our allies by 25% when character is immune to status ailments. We generate HP of all allies by 10% for three turns when battle starts, which comes in clutch. Next character is the Celebration Katsuki Bakugo. I have seen a lot of people use it. I used it as well, and I was able to beat the fight no problem at all. With this character, what I like about him the most is that he does shorten the cooldown time of all allies by one. He's able to increase skill impact once you do activate the second action skill, which is the Crash Burst. There's 300% damage to all opponents. Gives him a debuff, debuff to basically everything, power, defense and speed so you are going to be outspeeding the Genten and the Redestro no problem at all. With the first action skill he's able to cancel two of their temporary buffs, increase the defense by 30% for three turns and blocks their buffs for two turns. Now before I did start the fight at SS difficulty I thought you really couldn't block their buffs but luckily enough we can and it has a huge impact on the fight as well so it makes it to where Genten isn't popping off as much as he would in the fight. And then with the auto skills, after a character initiates two critical attacks, decrease the power of all opponents by 15%. So if you do combine that with the second action skill, that is going to be 35% decrease in speed. And then if give character ability to land a bullseye, increases the speed by 25% for three turns, up to one time. And then after character initiates a critical attack one time, increases critical hit rate by 10% up to five times, and critical skill pack by 10% up to five times. So once he is built up, both of those are going to go 50%, and this man's damage is going to be absolutely insane. So, we do have this support memory that I see a lot of people running. I don't know what probably is the best support memory for this fight. I ran support memories that basically go on critical skill and pack up. But if you don't have a character that has critical resistance, I would suggest you run a support memory that does give critical resistance. With the support memory, when equipped by a hero character, increases character's match HP by 35%, and gives character the ability to evade one time up to one time. Every four turns gives all allies the ability to evade one time up to three times. So if you don't have an evasion character as well, this support memory is going to be coming in clutch for you. When character's HP is below 50%, increases critical resistance of all allies by 15% for three turns up to one time. So it does give you critical resistance, but remember, you are on a timer with it. So if that character is going to go below 50% HP, make sure it's at the right moment. Please make sure it's at the right, right moment, yes. Next character we have is the Genten. I actually saw somebody beat it with the Genten, which is crazy to me. I want to look personally at what makes it to where that they did beat it. Is it because he restores all allies damage taken? Or is it that he makes sure that you don't get hit with the Frostbite as much? I'm trying to read it real quick. I don't remember the team that they used. Yeah, I don't see it here at all. Maybe it's because of the Frost effects. I don't know, but I did see somebody beat it with this Genten, which is crazy. Next, we have Star and the Now gonna say this personally i don't have star and stripes but i feel like with this character you definitely want to pair her up either with the medical or the midoriya i don't think she's gonna be that character that comes in clutch by herself and cook for free but we'll take a look at her skills real quick so it gives character the ability to evade two times so already she fulfills one of the requirements which is evasion increases the skill skill impact by 35 percent if the opponent is an in-type character and then also the skill skill impact by 35 percent when character is not evading She's giving speed on her first active skill. Decreases defense and speed. Okay, I like that. Uh, when character's not evading, increases character's max HP by 20%. Speed by 30% and then skill impact by 30%. When character is evading, increases character's power by 3% up to 10 times. So that's going to go up to 30%. And then increases the speed of all allies by 10% for two turns. After two turns pass, while character is evading, shortens character's cooldown time by one. That's clutch right there. If you do pair it up with another character that does cool down time as well, so it could go down by two. When character gets knocked out, decreases the speed of all opponents by 30% for three turns and defense by 20% for three turns, which I'm not a big fan of this effect. Reason being is that it is limited. If a character is gonna go down, I feel like they should give you something that's permanent, like maybe a good support or way crazier debuff than this, but I can see her being good for the reason that she is evading. Uh, do we have any more characters? I could have sworn I had more characters here. What the hell? 
Okay, maybe I'm missing something here. Hold on. Okay, Bakugo, Shoto, Uraka, the other Bakugo, the support memory, Star and Stripes. I saw somebody, real quick, before we end off the video then, I saw somebody use another character right here. Let's see if I can find them real fast. And yes, it is a he. Mr. There he is, right there, Mr. Compress. Now, I saw somebody beat it with Mr. Compress. I'm assuming the reason why he did use Mr. Compress is because he gives the ability to hide for two turns and then regenerates the allies HP by 20%. So what you will want to do with this character is hide the Mirico and then after you hide her, she's going to be safe and then you just chill it for free. Because you can't bind. What I've seen, you can't bind. But if you could, that is insane. And then when using a character's second or later successfully executed skill chain, decrease the skill impact of all opponents by 20% for three turns and critical hit rate by 20% for three turns. Okay, uh, another thing that comes in clutch as well. He's decreasing critical hit rate and also the skill impact. So you will take less damage from the Genten and the Redestro. So with that, that's where we're ending today's video. I hope you guys enjoy. Be sure to like and comment if you want to. You don't have to, but it's always greatly appreciated. Also subscribe. Again, you can let me know down below your personal experience of being Climax Battle if it was different from mine. You can also say what other characters people used to beat it because trust me, I bet somebody's beat it with like probably a Red All Might or probably Red Endeavor. I don't know. There are some teams out there. If anything, I wouldn't be surprised if SR was the case. And with that, I'll see y'all next time. Peace.